Joshua chapter 6 now and verse number 2. Uh, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thee of war and city once, thus six days. And seven priests shall hear, shall bear before the ark even trumpets of ram's horns. And the city shall be compassed uh, seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass uh, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the uh, and all the people shall shout with a great shout. Uh, the wall shall, of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and told, uh, said unto them of the covenant. And let seven priests uh, bear... Uh, seven trumpets and ram's horns before the trumpets of ram's horns can't read it verse number 20 there's the victory verse number 20 uh, the Bible says uh, and the people shouted when uh, the priest blew uh, with the trumpets and when the people heard the sound of the trumpet the people shouted with a great shout uh, that the wall fell down flat uh, so that the people went up in the city, every man straight before him, every man took, uh, and they took the city. You can see the idea there, you're talking about a major victory there. And sometimes in your life, that's what you need. Sometimes, you know, you run across certain things, uh, and uh, victory is what you need. Little things, you know, you can take those. Uh, those don't really trouble you too much. Once in a while, you uh, come up against something on the major side, and you need to realize even situations like that, it's ability, a great possibility of major victory in your life. Joshua chapter 6 is proof positive along those lines. And I want to give you some reasons why that uh, they had major victory that day. Let's bow for a word of prayer before I go any further. Father, we're thankful now for the Word of God, and I pray the Holy Spirit of God give uh, what's needed here. And I pray, Lord, you give something for everybody, Lord, at least a little bit of something. And I pray, Lord, they might think about it. Maybe today, uh, maybe it's a victory they need today. Maybe uh, ahead somewhere, uh, they'll be up against a uh, uh, a lot, and I pray that God, you'd let them realize that from Joshua chapter 6, a great possibility, a major victory, even in their lives, not just Israel, uh, Lord, in their lives as well. Uh, Lord, speak to every heart, I pray, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, when I think of Joshua and the walls of Jericho there, everybody knows about him. You're pretty well, you've read about him, sang about him, heard about him. Uh, that's kind of one of the stories like David and Goliath and uh, Samson and Delilah. Uh, it's kind of like Jonah and the whale, kind of like uh, Noah and the ark, Gideon's 300. All pretty standard stories there. A lot of miracles connected with those stories. A lot of major victories with those stories there. And uh, they're not bedtime stories. They're all true facts. They're biblical facts, historical facts. Uh, all took place. Uh, but every once in a while, you come up against a situation where personally, uh, you need some victory in your life. You need to realize that major victory is actually possible. Uh, you take Jericho, the city was not a good city. It was a city there, say, a city of palm trees. That was that, all right. Uh, but Miami's a city of uh, palm trees. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, horrible stuff goes on in Miami, one of the worst, uh, most violent cities in the country. Uh, Jericho, likewise, not a lot uh, was right spoken about it. Uh, you had uh, the harlot Rahab there, so that's not a good picture. Uh, a lot uh, about Jericho was not good. So the Lord said, uh, I'm going to give you some victory over Jericho. Joshua chapter 6, there's seven lessons for us to learn uh, that will show you the possibility of great victory in your life. Now, you had Joshua there, chapter number 3. He said, uh, I'm going to magnify him in the sight of all Israel, chapter 4. Uh, end of chapter number 3 and chapter number 4, it was history. God did magnify Joshua in the eyes of the children of Israel. In chapter number Number five, you have uh, Joshua there, and the captain of the Lord's host, I mean, speaks to him. And chapter number six, I mean, he's ready to go. So God speaks to your heart sometimes, and you want to realize that there are some ways in which uh, you and I can find some major victory in our life. And I'm sure if you don't need it today, there'll come a time whenever you need it. Now, number one, if you're going to find some major victory in your life, uh, you're going to have to look at it like they did here. They're going to have to go around about this city seven times. Seven days, going to have to comp the city. And the seventh time, of course, seven times around the city, uh, but I'm sure they'd like to have victory right now. Every time we have uh, get up against something, we feel like as though, man, uh, it's got to happen right now, and I want it to happen right now. And if it don't happen today, it's got to happen tomorrow. I won't be able to make it. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it doesn't always go that way. And you need to realize you're going to have some major victory in your life. You're going to have to learn some patience and perseverance. And uh, here they were. It's kind of like Shirley, you know, she's uh, trying to get over the, I don't know, whatever she had there, uh, and uh, the doc finally uh, gave her a, a prescription. 
and he gives her a prescription of moxicillin, and uh, she's got to take it for 10 days. She takes it about two days and says, man, i got to take it for 10 days. She takes it three days, and he says, uh, man, I can't believe, you know, I, I, you know, she wanted to get over that cold right now. She, I mean, she wanted to take one, two pills, and that was it, and be all done. Uh, doc says 10 days, you know. Well, in this case here, it's seven days. And you probably uh, you understand what I'm talking about. We like everything to happen right now. We're used to watching television. And, well, some of y'all used to watching TV, and uh, you see it happen right now. 30 minutes, I mean, you see this, and go, you know, from uh, good to bad, or bad to good, or however it goes. Uh, you see it, you know, right now. And so people get to uh, where they want things to happen in their life right now. It doesn't go that way. Whenever you need something to happen, realize uh, sometimes you go on and on and on. And just keep on doing right. You persevere uh, down the road, the Lord has something for you. In this case here, I mean, after chapter number five, the uh, Lord uh, really dealt with him there, captain of the Lord's host there, and the Lord dealt with him and said, now go to Jericho and comps this city about, and I mean, no question as far as Joshua was concerned, he knew victory could be had. They just had to do it God's way, and they had to persevere. Uh, I think of how that uh, there was a uh, uh, Lazarus there, and he had been dead four days. You know, I mean, one, two, three, and four. And uh, the fourth day, God gave victory. I mean, Lazarus come forth, and uh, there's major victory there. But sometimes it doesn't go in four days, sometimes five, six, and seven. Uh, but persevere. Don't fall apart now uh, just because it hasn't happened. Uh, you take Israel. They go through the tribulation. they got seven years. Uh, they're going to be people, be people that flop out at six years. and uh, But seven years where it's at. And he that endureth unto the end. That period of time, tribulation, he that endureth unto the end same shall be saved. Not six years, not five or four, uh, but seven. They've got to endure all the way through and are going to be seeing some things they never saw before in their life. Uh, they'll have to endure those kind of things and uh, yet keep them and maintain a testimony as well and uh, then they'll be saved. You and I, of course, that's not uh, church aid salvation for you and I, but uh, if you want major victory, then you need to realize that you persevere and you, you know, it doesn't happen as quickly as we want it usually. Once in a great while it may. Uh, when it does happen it may happen quickly. Uh, but a lot of times we've got to keep on going keep on going, keep on going and then the victory follows that. Alright, that's number one. Now number two you need to realize that the timing's got to be just right. In uh, verse number five there it was, uh, and it shall come to pass that, uh, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. Alright, so the timing's got to be exactly right. There is an unmistakable time whenever you make your move. Uh, you know, if things are cloudy, don't do nothing. You're not sure about something, don't do anything. Uh, I remember years ago when I didn't know what to do, and I asked Dr. Ruffin, what do I do? And he said, don't do nothing. And he said, before it's all said and done, Lord, use everything you have. Nothing will be wasted. And I've stretched myself to the point I, I think I went beyond what I was capable of. At least it felt like it was that way. Uh, but I would have never been that, you know, back in the old early days. You think, man, why doesn't it happen? Why doesn't it happen right now? And somebody else, you know, it's happened for them. Why don't it happen for me? Uh, just keep on doing right. The Lord's timing. Uh, some things have to be turned around. Some things have to be made right. Uh, maybe not even in your own life. Maybe somebody else's life. But the Lord's timing is always perfect. And in this particular case, whenever the long blast of the ram's horn uh, came, you knew that was the time that now you make your move. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a, I guess in this passage here, although it's, uh, Joshua chapter number 6, and I'm calling your attention to seven things, but boy, you read seven, 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 seven priests and seven uh, ram's horns and seven times around, and seven times in one day and seven days, and man, you just keep on reading, you know, seven, 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 so obviously there is a perfect time in which you do make your move. Uh, I think of the book of Numbers and Numbers chapter 10, uh, sometimes they blow the trumpet for the gathering of the children of Israel, and sometimes it... Uh, uh, for, uh, blow the trumpet and it was uh, however they blow it you know one time it would be for the gathering of the, uh, the children of Israel on this side of the camp and sometimes they blow it two times be for the gathering of the children of Israel on the other side and they blow it another way and uh, it was uh, for the gathering of the children of Israel and for the journeying of the children of Israel it all had to do with the blast of the trumpet and how that trumpet was blown and it could not be blown in any uncertain sound it's not to make an uncertain sound in this particular case here there came a time whenever uh, there was no doubt the perfect timing now now you make your move. Now is the time. There's no doubt about it. Unmistakable. And the Lord's timing is always perfect. Never early. Never late. Our Lord's timing is right dead on. Christians always get in a hurry, but the Lord never does seem to get in a hurry. And the idea would be that uh, you don't just kind of hold still until you hear that long blast of the ram's horn and you're sure that now absolutely certain now is the time in which we go forward all right so sometimes you know uh, you got to persevere sometimes you got to wait for the perfect timing 
Uh, you get ahead of God. A lot of Christians get ahead of the Lord. Uh, sometimes uh, probably more uh, get behind, you know. The Lord does something and deals with your heart and you kind of drag your feet. Pretty easy to do. I suppose about, about everybody does. But there is a perfect timing for the move uh, according to Joshua chapter number 6. Long blast of the ram's horn. Now there's something else that you need to realize when it comes to the area of uh, major victory in your life. Everybody's got a part. Uh, these people here, there's nobody that uh, did not have the part there. Uh, they had a major part. And uh, when I say that, they were to give a great shout. What you read there in verse number 5, I mean, uh, it describes it there. The people there were to give a great shout. Whenever they heard that long blast of the ram's horn, now let's go for it. But you know how people are. People feel like, uh, you know, uh, they don't have any shout in them. Uh, this is the case here, nobody can hold back. This is the case here, everybody is to go full tilt. This is the case here where uh, it was as though, I mean, uh, young, old, male, female, everybody, all the people, they all had a part. And people, they always kind of, you know, want to push it off on someone else and let them do it. And they can do it better than I can and, and have them do it. And, you know, and, and they're so much better. And, and everybody kind of shoved it. This is the case here. Everybody had their part. I mean, nobody uh, that did not have a part. And uh, they were to give her the shout, not the pout. And you know how Christians are. I mean, they want to pout about this and pout about that. Uh, this particular case here, uh, it says, hey, the people were to give a great shout. Uh, you couldn't uh, excuse yourself and say, I don't have any shout in me anymore. I've uh, done all my shouting, and uh, right now things are not going my way. As a matter of fact, I'm a uh, war slam out. As a matter of fact, i just uh, not in the mood right now. And uh, besides, you know, this doesn't make any sense. This is crazy anyhow. Uh, you know, whenever the Lord tells you this way you do it, then all the people did have a part. And the Lord said, let's give her a go, man. Let's give her a shout. Let's go for it. Uh, but, you know, people, they make the excuse, you know, Lord, you really, uh, you expect them too much. And uh, I really, I, you know, I'm, uh, I don't have much of a voice here. Give it all you got. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you might surprise yourself, as a matter of fact. But uh, find something to shout about, and let's get busy, and uh, let's give a lot of glory to the Lord. Now, along these particular lines, I think of congregational singing. And I think of how everybody has a part. And I think how, you know, uh, we started at 10 o'clock this morning, and uh, there were uh, maybe about half this crowd here, and uh, they were singing about halfway, you did 11 o'clock. And it seemed like as though that uh, things just kind of start off on the slow side. Uh, there's no starting on the slow side here. This case here where you got one shot, you got one time to go, and let's get busy and go. And all the people were to shout with a great shout. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we sort of hold back, and uh, it really should... Uh, it should be startling the way this group can sing. Uh, there may not be a big crowd here and all the pews may not be filled, but if everybody uh, gave it the best they had, went at it full tilt, uh, it'd be startling to visitors that come in. They'd say, whoa, man, what's this? And uh, they'd be shocked. They'd be startled at, you know, just the, uh, at what they hear of uh, even a small congregation going at it like they should. In this case here, all the people. I mean, it wasn't as though that somebody, man, that guy, he's really got a voice. I'm telling you what, uh, that guy, they don't need me. He's, you know, he's, he's the guy that's got the voice. He might be the guy that's got the voice. They need your voice as well. Uh, they need everything you got, everything everybody else has got. And whenever you sing, you need to put your heart into it and uh, not hold back at all. Uh, but think of Joshua chapter 6, that victory. It had to do with everybody taking their part. Everybody had their part. Everybody had to shout. Everybody had to go full tilt. And there was nobody holding back. Uh, you know, sometimes you have situations... And I remember one time I went over to a, another church, and Dr. Ruckman was preaching. And they sang one song and put him on. And it wasn't like there was nothing going. And he had to take it from, basically from zero and try to, you know, get it up to ten. And uh, try to get, you know, something going. Uh, it's a whole lot easier whenever, you know, things are stirring, things are uh, going pretty strong, and the singing's good and strong, and uh, there's an air of excitement there, and you're probably pretty well, you know, say, at about a four or five, and the preacher comes on, and he kind of fires away, and it gets you up to, you know, seven, maybe an eight uh, on a good day. Uh, but, you know, for everybody to be dragging, and uh, the preacher's got to do it all, it doesn't go that way. In the passage here, the Bible says all these people, I mean the whole congregation of the children of Israel, men, women, children, everybody, they had to go at it and give it a great shout that day, and then victory would be theirs. All right, perseverance is very important. Uh, perfect timing is very important. Uh, having your part and taking your part uh, is very, very important. And what you read in verse number 5 and verse number 6 there, uh, you're reading about the walls falling down flat. 
and you can't believe that. That seems like an impossibility. That seems like as though, uh, you know, the mortar uh, is going to hold together. It's not going to go down. It's going to stand up. Uh, but you're looking at total victory. You're looking at major victory. You're looking at big time victory there. Uh, those walls going down flat. It's like, uh, you know, the Lord's able to do it and they seem like an impossibility to you. But they're not. It's not an impossibility. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. And those walls there, it's not that they were daubed with untempered mortar, like you read back in the book of Ezekiel. Not that kind of a thing. Uh, it's a thing whereby uh, the Lord did the job. Now, what does it take for the Lord to, you know, topple a wall? I mean, I've seen walls up, uh, and next thing you know, those walls are down. I've seen walls up, and they got them all shored up, and uh, they can still go down. Uh, it doesn't take much at all. Uh, take these walls around about this town here. What's the Lord got to do? Uh, you know, puff a wind. Down they go. Uh, what's he got to do? He can take the ground and he can just, you know, cause it to rumble a little bit. They flop right all over. I mean, you see all these disasters and situations, little old earthquake, and uh, the walls go down, the houses cave in, the roofs cave in, and everything's down. That's all it takes for the Lord. It doesn't take a lot. And so there's the picture. Uh, the picture there is uh, that the Lord's uh, promised to do something you pretty amazing for you, uh, but... Uh, this is not a fairy tale. This is not a, you know, a bedtime story. This is actually true. The, wall, the walls will fall down flat. God, do it my way. Do it my way. And you may consider it to be very major, an impossibility. Uh, but the Lord said, I'll do the job, and the wall is going to go down flat. That's not a prediction that was never fulfilled. It's a prediction that was fulfilled. All right, you need to keep that. There's a picture in your life. You can think of a, maybe a picture needs altered tremendously. And you think, well, that's an impossibility. It's not an impossibility with the Lord. You say, well, I've tried and I've tried. That's the problem. Commit it to the Lord uh, and he shall bring it to pass. Uh, your desires, the things you have that are right. Uh, the Lord's able to do more than you could even imagine, more than you could ask or think. But you've got to do it uh, the Lord's way, and it's got to be the Lord. Major victory is possible. The devil, devil will tell you uh, it's impossible, and it's probably some of you today, you're looking at what you consider just about an impossibility. And it's not. We look at uh, Joshua chapter 6, and we say, man, it's just a piece of cake. Lord can, uh, he can move right on in, and Lord can turn it around very, very easily. All right, now the next thing you need to consider, and I'm talking about seven things, Joshua chapter 6, seven things that show you and I uh, that a major victory is a great probability and a possibility. In verse number 7, he says you need to compass the city round about for seven days. And, of course, the seventh time, seven days. Compass that city. Then there's a perimeter uh, where you need to go. There's boundaries, I guess you'd say, uh, that uh, the Lord would have for you and have for me as well. You need to find your place. You need to find my place. There's a perimeter uh, that you need to travel, and that would be the best way. Take the Apostle Paul. Even his missionary journeys there, uh, he went to go into Bithynia. And the Lord said, nope, uh, you know, I've got a spot for you, but we'll leave that for Peter. And you thought, you know, I'll just go anywhere. Go into all the world. And there's a sense in which that's true. But your travels, there's a place where your travels fit. And sometimes you want to be careful because we tend to get outside of where the Lord wants us. Very easy to do that. And uh, But in this case here, uh, if they stayed within the perimeters of where the Lord wanted them, where they compassed the city, not worrying about, you know, Gilgal or worrying about uh, Jerusalem about 25 miles away, uh, not worrying about things like that, but uh, we're talking about uh, right here at Jericho. And if you'll follow the perimeters the Lord has set up for you, then you can be sure uh, that the Lord will do that which you can't even fathom or imagine. The Bible talks about the bounds of his habitation in Acts chapter 17. Uh, you know, how the Lord sets about, and he, uh, he allows you and I a lot of freedom, but there's an area, there is a uh, a place in which you will function better than other places. And uh, so you want to sort of find that out. You want to find out uh, where that locale would be, uh, where you would fit the best, 
where the fit would be the right fit and where God could give a lot of victory. This case here, I mean, he said, go around about the city and say, uh, take a little time off and go out here and see how things are going out in the suburbs out there and uh, check out these uh, towns, uh, these cities of refuge are here. Got a few of those cities out there. Check them out as well. And he did not do that. He said, you go round and round and around that city. Go around it every day for seven days. And seventh day, you just go around about that city and just, I got a place for you. And that's where victory is going to be had. But sometimes we have a hard time with it. Sometimes we have our druthers. Sometimes we feel like, you know, this is what I want. Uh, when uh, the Lord would really have uh, something else for you. I think about the first Bible Believers Baptist Church uh, in history that I know. Brother Wayne Munn's church down in Foley. And Brother Wayne pastored that church for, uh, let's see, up to about 1978. And uh, let's see, he graduated in 1969. He was Dr. Ruckman's assistant that time. About a year later or so, he said, I'm going to go over fully and start a church. And Dr. Ruckman said, no, you're not going to do it. I want you right here. And, of course, he loved him. You know, Wayne was German. He was German, big time on the German deal. And, and uh, so, you know, Wayne was a good fit there. And uh, But Wayne said, I'm going to Foley, going to start a church. And he went to Foley and started a church. Called a Bible Believers Baptist Church. Had a big old uh, piece of plywood there. Somehow or another, he cut out a, a soldier with a sword there, 1611 AV, you know. And that was in front of that church, sat in the country there. 75, I went down and preached for him. 78, he came up to Harrison, Ohio. So he pastored the church in the range of about seven or eight years. Bible Believers Baptist Church. And Wayne came up to Harrison, Ohio, and he had a good ministry up there at Christian School. And uh, they got a building built. Uh, Jack Grigsby had it. It was a basement church. And uh, Wayne got the upper part uh, built on that. And then he went back to Foley. He went back to Foley because Bible Believers Baptist Church wasn't doing nothing. And uh, his parents, they were in the church, and it seemed like as though nothing was going on. As a matter of fact, the church was about to fold, and it did fold. But this church here is the first one that's, you know, of this title that didn't fold. Uh, Wayne Munn was the first one. But, and you know what, what happened? I said, Brother Wayne, what happened? Man, things are going pretty good. I preached down there, and it seemed like things were going fairly well. And, and uh, man, what happened to it? He said, oh, Brother Art said, whenever I left and went up to Ohio, he said, uh, they got a preacher in from Maine. And he said, the people, they couldn't even understand him. And they just, you know, kind of drifted off. Next thing you know, there's nothing left. It's this way. You go down the deep south where the folks are, you know, born and rooted there. And the diction they have, when I went down there anyhow, it was, uh, huh? And I could hear good at that time. <laughs> now when I say, huh, it's not because I couldn't understand you. I don't hear you. But uh, I could hear real good. And I'd say, huh? And they'd repeat themselves. And then uh, I didn't get it. And it's, I'd say, huh? And they'd repeat it again. And then I'd smile and act like, you know, you know how you put on the act and act like you get it. I didn't get it. Because it was different. It took me a while to get in the groove. By the time I got in the groove, after three years, I came up here. And my mother sounded <laughs> kind of unusual to me compared to the Deep South. Well, take somebody not from here, but go all the way up the East Coast to Maine. And then take them all the way down to the bottom. Foley right there at Gulf Shores. Right on the Gulf down there. And it's a different story. It's a different lingo. And the fellow was probably a good guy. I don't even know who he was. Probably a good guy. But he didn't fit. The fit was not there. And so you got to find where the Lord wants you. In this particular case here, I mean, there's a place for everybody. But uh, you have perimeters. And there are some perimeters that would be better for you. Uh, better for me as well. And uh, you understand that. And so uh, you find where the locale God would have you and that's the best place for you to be or to stay yeah you can go over here and maybe uh, take the fellows preaching I'm sure it was straight I'm sure it was King James Bible they just didn't get it and so uh, you need to realize that God would have if you want to find some major victory in your life uh, you want to find out where that perimeter what it would include what it doesn't include and you don't find yourself inside that perimeter and uh not only that, when it comes to uh, perimeter, I think of uh, one time uh, Dennis and John and I don't know who, all different ones went different times, down to Eddieville for some preaching, down in Kentucky State Prison, and uh, Al Pacheco went along. And you know Al, well, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's always off somewhere. We'd go camps and we'd get done, where's Al? And Al, he'd be clear out over here somewhere witnessing somebody on some porch. And he never, he's always off somewhere. Well, when they went down Eddyville, they were instructed by the guards, stay with the group. You're on your own, stay with the group. Guess what Al does? You know, 
here's the group there in the yard there, and you got all these, you know, hardened criminals now. And uh, so Al, he's out somewhere wandering off, witnessing somebody out there. And the guard said, uh-uh, no go, this does not work. You've got to stay with the group. All right, now, you know something? The Lord has the same thing for you and I. Go you into all the world, understand that. But there's a place, a locale where you fit, and you want to make sure you find that fit. And God, you, you want some major victory in your life? You want to find yourself within the perimeter God has for you, and I need to as well. The Bible says we're laborers together, and so, uh, you know, everybody's got their part. Uh, when I think of that as well, I say a place for everybody, a part for everybody. Think of the place. I mean, everybody is needed. I mean, you're needed for the body of Christ. You're needed uh, for this church to have a lot of victory. You are needed. I mean, you know, folks wander and wander and wander. You're needed. If you want a lot of victory, see so your church have a lot of victory. All right, you have a place. There's a place for you, and God has that place for you. Now, I think of how the Lord, you know, what does He do? He besets us before and behind. We need that. We need covered. There, the Lord's got us covered here. He's got us covered here. You need that. And likewise, uh, the Lord's got a place for you and I. And, you know, people get the idea that uh, I, I'm not all that important. Not so. You are important. You're very important to the body of Christ. You're very important even to this little old church. Uh, you're very important. And sometimes people think, you know, that... Uh, Oh, what I do doesn't really matter. Nobody sees it. Now, you know, it's never announced from the pulpit. And nobody, everything is still very important. And though I may not see it, sometimes I see things unexpectedly. I come out and somebody's out here doing a job that I, you know, didn't know anything about. I may see that. Uh, but it's not necessarily that I have to see it. The Lord does see it all. And you do it for the Lord anyhow. Uh, there's a place for everybody. Uh, look at uh, verse number 13. And the Bible says, Seven priests... Bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horn for the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed man went before them, there before the priest. But the rear word, all right, then there's a, there's a group that comes behind. They're all needed. There's a place for everybody. Going to have some major victory? There's going to have to be a place for everybody. All right, so the rear word came after the ark of the Lord, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. All right, place for the priest, place for the armed man. Place for the rear word. Oh, there's going to be. There's always a place. There's a place where God wants you, and you need to remember that we are laborers together with God. Right? I mean, this is not a one man show. Never has been. Never will be. Uh, we're laborers together with God, and so there's a place for you. Are you going to be in your place? You need to be in your place. God has a place for you. All right. Last of all, let me talk to you about the procedure. A procedure that paid off. And verse number 15, things have got to be done God's way. It came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, conference the city about the same, after the same manner, seven times. Only on that day they conference the city seven times. All right, then uh, things had to be done the way the Lord told them to do it. Seventh day, seven times. Not the sixth day, six times. Fifth day, seven times. It's seventh day, seven times. One time for seven days. And the seventh day, let's go and go and go seven times around. And uh, there's a procedure that does pay off. God do it God's way. Pay off. Look at verse number 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. The people shouted with a great shout. They're doing it God's way. All right, the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. I mean, great major victory that day for the children of Israel. Why was that? Because the procedure God told them to do was followed. They didn't get out of bounds. They didn't uh, get outside the perimeter. They did things exactly the way the Lord did it. Timing was perfect. Everything was right dead on. People all had a place. They were in their place. Uh, the people were patient. Everything paid off. And the Lord's timing was perfect. Major victory is possible for you and I, for this church, just like it was for the children of Israel. What did I say? I said... Sometimes in your life and in this church, we just do right, we are patient, and we persevere, 
And when things don't happen in our time as quickly as we want them, and the timing we've got set up, we hold on and wait for God to move. We know the Lord's timing is perfect. And the Lord makes it so clear that you don't miss the long blast. It wasn't as though that uh, this part of the camp comes in or this part of the camp comes in. They knew it was time for all to come in and it was time now to go forward, go round about that city. The Lord's timing was perfect. We knew that there is a part for everyone. That is the whole congregation. Oh, that whole congregation is to unload, I mean, for all they're worth. That whole congregation, not one, two, three, or half a dozen. That whole congregation was to shout with a great shout. That is, they were to, they were to act like as though, I mean, give it all you got. And uh, Jericho would think that there's five times more people than there actually was. And sometimes that needs done. Sometimes we've got to take our part and give it everything we got in the little part that we have. The picture that's an amazing picture. Now think of the victory that you need. And uh, just picture it. Just think the possibility with the Lord. Think of what could be done. Now maybe you don't need major victory. But you will. Uh, there's probably been times when you did need it. There will be times in the future when you need it. True of myself. True of you as well. And you need to picture this. Always have it in your mind. If it could do it, the walls of Jericho. If the walls of Jericho could come tumbling down, like the little old song goes and the kids sing. If the walls of Jericho could go over, then what you have, the problems I have, they can be handled. The Lord can handle those problems. And you need to picture that, of how the Lord can turn it all the way around. 180 degrees, the Lord can turn it completely around. All right, the perimeters. Make sure that you find yourself where God wants you. Make sure you don't just do what you want to do. But make sure you do what God wants and where God wants you to do it. You need to realize there is a place for everyone. There is the rear word. They were important. There were the ones that went in front. They were important. Roger preached to us up at the uh, restaurant the other day. And he said, you know, you people, you're like an automobile. You need your front end in line. A lot of bumps in the road. A lot of potholes out there. You notice all the potholes? I mean, about every road you go on, you're going like this, you're missing, you know. You know, sometimes manholes that are four inches down below the surface there, but potholes now, they're for real. And they're going to, you know, they're going to get worse. And so the front end needs lined up by the Word of God. You need your lights on. That is, you know, if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, and sometimes you've got to have them put the brights on, you know, the bright lights on. Uh, talked about your carburetor's got to be clean. Otherwise, you know, it's going to, you can have gas there and nothing's going to go on. Ain't going to get through. Won't fire up. And uh, what was the last one, Roger? Uh, sometimes when all else fails, get out the owner's manual. <laughs> uh, that's the Bible. And uh, you go buy the Bible, you know, like an automobile. I never knew I was, but uh, I'm a Ford man, right? Bill, get that by been driving Fords and Lincolns for quite some time, so I drive anything. But anyhow, uh, I enjoy those 302s and uh, F-150s. They're, they're pretty enjoyable. Back to business here. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, the picture, amazing, the perimeter. That is where God wants you. The place uh, may be in front or it may be in back. But everybody, the armed ones were in front. The priest followed. You had the rear word, and the rear word was still important. Everybody has a place. Everybody's important. And the procedure has got to be the Lord's way. You want the payoff like they got it here? Then you do it God's way. What God tells you to do in the owner's manual. That big old Bible you got. That Bible that you got's got two-edged sword in it. Like Ehud had. And that thing is about 18 inches long. You got your big old Bible. You got all you need. You got the manual. And uh, the procedure has got to be done God's way. And the payoff be yours. Major victory. Is it not? Say, so of course it is. Oh, I think major victory is possible for you and I as well. He said, Joshua, I'm going to magnify you. That he did. He said, Joshua, let me talk to you. Take off your shoes. Place where on your stands. Holy ground. I'm Captain of the Lord's host. 
And he listened to the captain. And the next thing you know, the captain says, you go around about that city and I'm sure that had he not talked to the captain, he thought, I don't believe I got this straight. I don't believe this is right. I believe a man, uh, uh, something, this doesn't make any sense at all. This doesn't even add up. But he just talked to the captain there, and he got along and clear. I mean, he heard exactly what he had to say, said, we'll do it that way. And the procedure was followed, the Lord gave to him, and major victory was theirs. And major victory can be yours as well. The possibility is great if you do it the Lord's way. So I have a problem, I'm impatient. Then you may get a victory once in a while, but major victory will not be yours. That comes down the road after you persevere. You say, well, I have some victory, but I, uh, uh, I just like to do what I want to do. Uh, then you're going to have a problem with finding the perfect will of God. Well, I like to wait, Brother Art. Uh, you know, the Lord's time is always the best. It's perfect. And uh, so sometimes you hold still until God makes things very clear. If it's not clear then you don't have to do anything. Eventually it'll be clear. Eventually it'll be wide open. And you hold still. Uh, but you be careful to realize you do have a part. You have a place and you have a part. And everybody is important. I'd like to see some major victory around here. You know what we need around here? More than anything else? More than anything else that I know of. We need to see some souls get saved. We need to see some uh, Christians follow the Lord in believer baptism. But we need to see some activity here at the altar that is lost folks. And if there are no lost folks here, what are you going to do? I'm not going to try to have a ministry of doubt and create questions. You didn't really get saved because you didn't really do it exactly like I did. Uh-uh. But that's what we need. If you want to see some major victory, that's where it's at. But we've got to do it God's way. And Joshua, he said, those walls are going to go down. And verse number 20, those walls fell down flat. I mean, they went over totally, completely. They were over. Because God gave major victory to Joshua and the children of Israel. And our God is the same God. And he can give major victory to you in your time of great need. You follow God's word. Follow the procedure. Even the seven things that I called your attention to in Joshua chapter 6. Those will work and give you major victory. Bow for prayer. Father, we're thankful now for the word of God and lessons we learned from the word of God. Joshua chapter 6. And Lord, what we've read and sung about many, many times. Uh, Lord, lesson for us. A lot of lessons for us. And God helps to pick up on it. Lord, you know the one uh, that each one of us are the weakest at and the area that we tend to mess up. And Lord, squeeze on the hearts of your people. And perhaps there are some this morning, they do need victory. They need major victory. Help not to ever give up. Help to realize, Lord, you can give that victory in a very short order. Seemed like a long time to the children of Israel, but Lord, really, it's not that long. And Lord, you can do the same for a church, and you can do the same for each one of us. Speak to hearts, I pray, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Stand sing a little bit before we go now. Lord, spoken to your heart in any way, and you feel like you need to do some praying. Maybe there's an area in which you have been extremely weak. Maybe you feel like as though that's uh, uh, virtually an impossibility. It's not. Whatever that uh, obstacle is, or the difficulty is, not too great for the Lord. A procedure to be followed that starts with you just hanging in there, goes down through there with you in your place, goes down through there with you taking your part, doing your part, goes down through there with you staying within the bounds God set up for you, and the bottom line is victory the Lord gives. Now, I don't know what your area of weakness might be or something you need to pray about, but if there's something that God squeezed on your heart about, I want to ask you to you respond this time as we sing a couple of verses. 17, is it, John? Yes, sir. Have thine own way, and they're short, so if you're going to do it, you probably ought to move out in the first verse be the time to come. God spoke in your heart. You need to come. There is a glaring weakness. There is an area that's 
kept you from major victory. Let's put it on the altar and ask the Lord to get it turned around so as his procedure can then be followed in victory can be yours. Need to come? Come while we say. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me Things in are me, victory, a possibility, and that a blessing. After thy way, while I am waiting, you listen. Not just for Israel, not just for others, for you and I as well. God's poking your heart. There's a way to do it. There's a procedure to be followed. Follow it. You'll find some victory. Sing another verse. Need to come. You come. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Watch me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Okay, Bob, you have to close in prayer. Dennis, if you would. Amen. Lord bless you. Be dismissed. Enjoy your lunch. Enjoy the fellowship. Don't forget, plenty of points out